Well, good morning. I obviously, and, and by the way, there's a typo in the program. It's Don Osler, Osler, not Oslet. So, and, and, and uh, many of you may know Don, and, and uh, I, I'll have to confess that I am not an expert <laughs> on the Upper Colorado um, River Commission. Um, Don very much apologizes for not being here. He wanted to be here. He's very interested in the topics we're going to be discussing here, but um, he's up to his eyebrows right now in negotiating with the with Mexico over the um, over the over the Columbia or the Colorado River Basin Treaty. So, um, in fact, I think today he's even in Tijuana. Um, Working through some, some very difficult issues with uh, with Mexico on on the on the future of that um, their the agreement between the upper basin states and, and the uh, country of Mexico. Steve Wolf uh, is here and he can uh, he can help me. Uh, he knows a lot more about this than I do. So we're gonna we're gonna take a little a little shot at this. Uh, Don sent me this information. Um, and I, I put it together in a PowerPoint, so uh, forgive me if I, I, I read a, a, a bunch of it. Um, so I, I know that's, that's really not very um, good form uh, in, in presentations, but given the situation, um, you, you get what you pay for. Um, the uh, important thing that Don was, had mentioned to me in regard to the the Upper Basin Compact, is there a bunch of things in, in any compact that all of you uh, may be aware of? I, I'm more familiar with the, the Bear River Compact uh, between the three states of Idaho, uh, Wyoming, and, and Utah. Worked on that for many years. <clears throat> but all of these compacts have a thou shalt, thou shall sort of series of, of elements in them. Um, and these are some of the... Uh, of, the upper basin states shall, or the, or the river commission shall. And the upper Colorado River Commission shall, first of all, determine what the consumptive uses of each state is in the upper basin each year. Uh, they need to make findings on the water deliveries to the lower basin each year. And this is the numbers. Uh, John was talking about that earlier. Bear River Compact also has these. A lot of the newer negotiations on contracts uh, specifically get away from uh, allocations per se in acre feet or, or that sort of thing because it becomes very, very problematic and will go to proportions. But, and this is one, this compact is quite old, so you have specific numbers in there about what the upper basin states will not do and they will not deplete the flows more than 75 million acre feet in a 10 year, in a 10 year running total. Um, and, and it says, i.e. If, if the if, the, if available, the water, making that water available to the lower basin. And if that's the case, if, if, if the water availability drops below that amount, then the upper basin states must curtail their uses. Curtail means to cut back their uses. And, and Don uh, makes it analogous to a junior priority water right. In other words, the, the commission must determine, the upper basin commission must determine what the amount of curtailment is and uh, what's required, and determine how it should be distributed amongst uh, the upper basin states. Compact goes on to say that uh, the curtailment volumes for each state will be determined by a ratio of what each state used last year and to the total amount used last year within the upper basin, and then apply that a ratio to determine the amount that, that each, uh, that uh, is required for upper basin curtailment. The, the important thing for the commission then is that they need to know consumptive use information from the previous year um, for each state by, by state because that's each state now is going to each state you know administers uh, their own water but they are part of the of the the, the, the uh, Colorado River Compact. So then each state uh, needs to make the determination um, as what their water use was and then what um, approximately uh, how much water they use in the previous year 
um, after the end of, of that water year. And then it says, and then it goes on in the compact to say, "Thou shall currently the consumptive use information is is is." Uh, I mean, the, from my understanding of what what Don told me is the Bureau of Reclamation is providing this information now for the states, and um, but the problem is that the data isn't available from the Bureau of, um, until three to five years after um, the end of the given water year. And that's really not consistent with the time frame required um, by, by the compact. So uh, Don's question, and I'll have a number of these at the end, I think they're important to consider, is, is the timing of the consumptive use information is key to being able to administer the compact. The last point here on the, what the commission shall do is the commission must determine that if there's any overuse by the state um, and, and, a, and a factor um, by which that payback is part of the curtailment cap, uh, calculations and when they are required. So there needs to be an accounting. The, 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 each state has to account for their water use, determine what it is, and and, and the commission needs to then, and, and the states need to, to figure out how they're going to allocate any sort of curtailment that occurs because of overuse in the upper, um, upper basin states. Well, Don, Don did say that the, uh, the upper Colorado uh, River Basin Commission is currently uh, involved in a study to look at how the upper basin states um, can use remote sensing. I don't know the specifics of that study. I didn't have a chance to talk to him about it. Um, Steve might know a little bit more information on it. But I, my understanding is they are currently engaged in a study, and I don't know who's, that, who's uh, doing that work for them. But the, they're trying to determine how remote sensing can be applied to the upper Colorado River Basin, and if so, what, how much will it cost? And, and what sort of data are they going to need? So it looks like a, a fairly broad-based study looking at how remote sensing might be able to help them. And he didn't say it was specific to ET, but I, but I would imagine that it's, that's part of the, of the study process. He did, he did spend a little bit of time in the information he sent me talking about the Mexican Water Treaty because that, that rolls into their, their need for remotely sensed data. Um, the Mexican Water Treaty of 44 says that the upper basin states shall supply one half of the treaty requirements. See, now we're, now we're away from hard numbers and <laughs> more to proportions. But still, there is a requirement um, that, that the upper basin states must supply one half of the water uh, to, uh, to the state of Mexico in that treaty. And if there's an extraordinary drought, it is possible to, sh to short them proportionate to the, to the amount of shortage in the U.S. And the upper basin experiences shortage every year, according to Don, and, in, and many users are above storage reservoirs, um, which means that they're, they're currently run-of-the-river irrigation operations, natural flow operations. So he says the hydrology sh shorts them. When they run out of water, when the... When the, when the when their, when their water right, based upon prior appropriation, is cut back, then they, they have to stop irrigating for that year, even though there's still potential growing season left. Don went on to say that they have a handle on the, on the regulated shortages, uh, pr predominantly from those that, that come from uh, reservoir uh, water supplies, but they don't have a real good handle on what those, those irrigated lands that are, don't, don't have any storage component on what their annual shortages are. So this is what Don said that the commission needs. Um, they need to have consumptive use data more timely. And he said they need to have it really within nine months or less at the, after the end of the water year. Said secondly, they need to have more accurate consumptive use data. Um, if it's to be used in these situations of administering the compact. In other words, it's going to need to be able to stand up um, in, in, in an administrative hearing or if it has to go to court. 
and he needs, they need to be able to measure and get a, a better estimate on these, these hydrologic or natural flow irrigated um, shortages. And, and lastly, and this is always one of the more complicated ones, having worked with three states on the Bear River Compact, getting all states to accept and agree to a specific methodology or an approach um, to calculating ET and using the data um, in, uh, to, allocate, uh, to determine how much their curtailment is going to be uh, based upon uh, compact requirements. So these are the questions that Don has for us, I says, the, the, the ET community. It says, will remote sensing work across such a wide area and in mountainous terrain? A big concern is, will this remotely sensed data be able to give them what they need given the variety of, of uh, and, and elevation of some of the areas that are water using uh, in, the, in the upper basin states? Can, can remote sensing be applied to the in, entire upper basin and get, get the consumptive use information more timely? And lastly, can remote sensing show us when a field is no longer watered, when, when, it's, when, the, when the natural flow source is dried up, and can we calculate the magnitude of those, those water shortage for uses in the Mexican Treaty Administration? And he's talking about those issues probably even today. So that's, uh, that's all I had from Don. If you have any questions, uh, I'm not the right person to answer them. But, uh, but anyway, I, and looking at this, it, it, this is, to me, it's a classic opportunity, I think, uh, to use these, uh, these technologies. And uh, certainly one that they are very, very interested in um, because they have a, they have a significant uh, requirement to administer the compact consistent with the, with, the, with the elements in that compact, but also in a way that all the states can agree to and, and, and do that in a more timely manner than they're currently doing it. So they have an immediate need that this technology, I think, uh, is a, would be a, a, a perfect fit for. So thank you.